Um, I am Tad Griffin, I'm the choir director here at uh, McDonald Junior High. Um, man, how many showed up? We could have totally done this in the air conditioning of my cl classroom. I'm sorry. Um, they're supposed to have air conditioning going on, but whatever happened, didn't happen. Um, this is my first year at this school, so there is a little bit of transition going on uh, for the whole program. Um, but I'm really hoping to make it a smoother transition. Looks like most of us here are sixth grade parents, so you won't know if it's a transition or not. Um, all right, um, let's see here. Got some goals for your students this year. Mostly we just really want them to have fun, enjoy music. Um, you can see up here, choir can be a great place, great outlet for your kids. We want them to find a special place here, a um, place that they really feel like they belong. Um, some people do that on athletic fields, some people do it in music, wherever it is, we would love to be that place for your um, students. Uh, we work very hard in our classes on singing technique, on musicianship, things that they can take um, to other disciplines if they want. If they decide, you know what, choir's really not for me, I want to go try out band. I'm going to try to teach them things that go across all music spectrums, as well as teaching them just presentation, how you stand up, how you look. Um, like you have some, feel like you have some dignity. Just standing up tall, being proud of who you are, that kind of thing. Um, we work on your life skills of self-discipline, cooperation, responsibility, teamwork. Everything we do as a choir, it's, it's a team. Um, I have reinforced to, I hope all of my choirs, um, but I've been trying to reinforce that if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then it's not just about you, it's, it's about the team. And so we're really working on that team mentality, coming together to achieve a common goal, uh, and just really working hard on how am I contributing. Uh, and then, uh, award winning choir program. We go to contests throughout, throughout the year and things. Uh, it's awesome to go participate. It's even more fun to come home with trophies. Um, and having heard the singers we have here, um, having met the kids, we really have a good chance of coming home with all kinds of awards. Um, it's just taking those disciplines, self-discipline, cooperation, responsibility, teamwork, bringing those together, and we could have an outstanding program. And I'm really looking forward to working toward that this year. All right, grading. This is a district grading policy. Um, you have major grades, minor grades, and other grades. 50% of your grades and, and choir are your tests. Tests are concerts. We actually have two grades with them because they're a concert etiquette um, part of our Texas State curriculum that I have to teach. Uh, so there's, what, as they're out here watching other groups perform, that's concert etiquette. Um, and I'm just watching how, how they behave. Uh, are they listening? Are they being a distraction? That, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, of course, with concerts, how are they performing on stage? What are they doing um, to contribute to our choral sound? Um, your 35% your minor grades. Um, I do a weekly participation grade, and I've actually gotten off to a rough start. I've not gotten my first weekend. Uh, but I will do that for every, every week. Each student starts off with 100 points at the beginning of the week, 20 points per day. And if I have to get on to them saying, stop hitting Johnny, or stop talking to Susie, or what, whatever we're doing, um, that's five points off their grade that day, which I, I've tried to stress to them, seems like just a tiny little bit, but it adds up quickly. Um, so we really work on always working toward our goals. Um, I also do, if you have any short quizzes, which I don't plan on having many, if any, or maybe a music theory concept we've been working on. Um, folder checks. This is kind of a big deal. I've had students in the past who just did not take care of their supplies. And because they did not take care of it, when they needed it, they didn't have it. Um, I have a girl last year who, by the end of the first semester, on her choir folder, she had the three ring binder, no covers. I, it, it was, it blew my mind. This year, um, I'm actually taking an idea from another director of the district doing folder checks. I have supplied them with a three ring binder um, with their name in front. Some of them I have to fix that actually. Um, I have supplied them with all the music they're going to need. I have supplied them with a pencil bag with a sharpened pencil in it. 
and I've asked them all to keep that in there so um, they are prepared for class. If I say, hey, pick out your pencil and write in how to pronounce the word chamis, because we're doing some Latin stuff, and that's a word. Uh, it really is a word. Uh, I need them to have their supplies ready. If they don't have it, then they're not ready for class. I'll be doing random supply checks, uh, or random folder checks, where I'm going to go through, take out their folder, um, and just go through and say, okay, we have all of our music, we have all of our measures in our music number, we are prepared, we have our uh, pencil bag in here, we have our pencil in here. Uh, I will not hold them accountable for anything I have not taught them yet. Um, I know my sixth graders, I have not talked about numbering your measures, I have not talked about writing um, your soul fed, which is the sight reading um, thing, into your music. Uh, so they're not accountable for that yet. But once we get there, they will be. Uh, but I do take a grade on that, it is a minor grade. 50% of your grade, very minor things. Um, we've had a couple of theory, music theory days, learning just how to read music. What is a quarter note? What are the rest? That just kind of your basics of music. Yeah, is your no. oh, sorry. I'm just like questions, I'm confused. Uh, that kind of thing. Just minor things that will come up day to day, but not very often. Uh, curriculum. My curriculum is defined by the state of Texas. It is, I say refined by me because I choose how I teach it, um, what order I teach it, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to provide a variety of cultures and eras uh, through music. We've actually already started, we're doing some, with the sixth grade, we're doing some Spanish music. With some of my other classes, we're doing some African music in the Zulu language. Um, so we're really kind of trying to bring a broad, broad variety of music to your kids. Um, trying to understand music terminology, uh, intervals, notation. That's what I was talking about with music theory, just your general, this is how music is put together, this is how it works. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that if they decide, you know what, choir is really not for me. I think I'm going to try band, or I'm going to go try orchestra. They can take it anywhere, um, and it'll apply just the same way. Um, as a choir, a performing arts, we're going to work on performing in groups. We're going to work on performing individually. I will not require a student to sing by themselves in front of the class. It, it's scary, and I get that. Uh, but they will have opportunities to audition for solos. Um, we actually have a few on our first concert. Um, they'll have opportunities to perform in small groups through our solo ensemble competition, and obviously large groups of choirs. We sight read every day. Um, which means we're coming out, it's just like you guys can open up a book and say, okay, this is what it says. You can read it, you can understand it with never having heard it before. Um, sight reading is very important to me as a musician. Uh, and I want, those, I want all of your kids to have that skill that they can take and they can say, look, I can read this just like you read a book. It's a fantastic tool for any musician. Uh, and it's one of the skills we're actually graded on in our UIL competitions, which is the equivalent of our star head. Uh, we work on critiquing music, um, listening to it, saying, you know, this is, this is good because, this is bad because. So it's more than just music, it's giving an opinion and defending it. Uh, so and then offering, say, what if you tried this? What if you tried getting louder here? Um, so really trying to critically think through what they're hearing. Uh, and then, again, using appropriate concert etiquette, how they behave, what is an appropriate norm for um, a classical style concert. Um, here are the audience etiquette guidelines. Um, one of the best ways that you guys can help, uh, help our program is demonstrating these um, for your kids at concerts. Um, I know not, not everyone has a lot of exposure to concerts. I'm not gonna go into these uh, very much right now because I gave a copy to all of you through the handbook. Um, and I will be getting another copy to your parent or to your students shortly when we start going over it in class. Uniforms. Uh, in the past there's been a uniform fee. I meant to put one in, I forgot, but since I forgot to put it in, you're off the hook for this year. Uh, I'm going to hold myself to what I put in.